before the first flight of the day, of course, it's important to check the Emer bus. The Emer bus, if you remember, is the electrical bus that contains just the bare essential items uh, to keep us flying safely. If we have a problem with the electrical system, uh, maybe a, a battery overheating or uh, uh, an electrical fire, something of that nature, uh, we would want to eliminate everything except just the bare bones uh, uh, electrical needs. So that's why we have the Emer bus. Uh, to select the Emer bus, uh, all we have to do is put it down into the lower position away from where it normally is in the battery position. So it's a three position switch, Emer, off, and battery. Now let's talk for a minute about what's on the Emer bus. So if we really need to go to the Emer bus where we, uh, we maybe had, uh, an electrical fire or, um, something is shorting out and we're not sure what it is, uh, uh, a battery's overheating, something like that, uh, we would want to switch to the Emer bus to cut down the electrical load to just the bare essentials. And, uh, when we do that, we would have power still to the voltmeter. So, uh, that way we could read what our battery voltage is. We'd still be able to tell what's going on there. We'd also have the cockpit floodlights. That's this rheostat here. Uh, when we turn that on, the overhead floodlights in the ceiling of the cockpit should illuminate. That way we can still read instruments and generally see what's going on, read checklists, things like that. Uh, we would also have COM1 and NAV2. Uh, those are the standard items in most Citation 2s. The difference in this particular aircraft is that we have a dual GTN 750-650 stack. Uh, so both of those radios get power on the Emer bus now in this particular aircraft. And uh, we'd also have the co-pilot HSI. That's, uh, we'd uh, have that instrument working. And uh, the key to testing that is to making sure that the heading flag, or in this case, the uh, compass flag it's called, Holes to show that the gyro is spun up and uh, working correctly. So uh, that's basically it. There's not, not a lot of items on the Emer bus. To check the Emer bus, we're going to check each of those pieces of equipment. So we'll start by turning the Emer bus on and notice that the voltmeter comes alive, indicating our battery voltage. We're also going to come over here and right away look at the Copilot HSI. Notice here that as we watch it, it's going to spin up, it's going to take a few seconds, maybe even take a minute or two, and uh, we'll get the uh, compass flag to pull, indicating that the gyro is spun up. We saw the CDI needle move there, that's running through a few checks on the uh, Garmin GPS system because that's what's wired to it currently. There we go. It finally pulled. Like I said, it can take a minute or two, but uh, the gyro spun up adequately, and uh, that is considered tested. After the Copilot HSI compass flag pulls, we're going to come back here to check to make sure that the GPS units are powered up. And uh, as I said earlier, a normal Citation 2 would have COM1 and NAV2. Uh, but in this case, we have COM1 and uh, NAV1 are both the, uh, the radios that we're getting at the moment. Next, we're going to take a look at the floodlights. Turn the rheostat all the way up. And then check the lights in the ceiling. They both shine fine. Okay, the last point I'd like to make is uh, what you don't get in the two, particularly compared to the newer generations of the 500 series citations, like a, a five or an ultra or an encore. Um, in the in the two, it's just really bare bones. So uh, when we go to the Emer bus, 
notice that uh, we don't have standby pitot heat. So when I turn the standby pitot heat on, nothing happens. Be, or the, I should say when I turn the pitot heat on, nothing happens because nothing is getting powered. There's no, there's no uh, movement in the voltmeter because nothing's getting power there. Um, so you really don't have any ice protection uh, when operating on the Emer bus. Also, coming up here to the pilot side left seat instruments, look at that. There's nothing working right now. The, uh, I mean, you, you would still have an airspeed indicator, uh, but your, your main attitude indicator, your HSI, directional gyro, uh, RVSM altimeter, all those things uh, are going to be inoperative. You'll still have your peanut gauge attitude indicator uh, through its own battery. Uh, with the standby gyro, of course. Um, and then, of course, a, a VSI is, is an analog instrument. But uh, really, the left seat pilot uh, should not be flying the airplane on the Emer bus. If it comes to the point that uh, you're operating on uh, the Emer bus, it really should hand the controls over to whoever's in the right seat. And uh, in the right seat, they'll, they'll be able to uh, fly off of the uh, pretty conventional six pack here. We've got a uh, vacuum powered attitude indicator, uh, got a, uh, a standby altimeter down there. Um, so even if the RVSM altimeter is not functioning, you still have al altitude information right uh, close by. Uh, you have a good HSI, airspeed indicator, VSI, all of that's working fine. So it's pretty easy and straightforward to fly an approach on the right side on the Emer bus. And then the last item I, I should point out here is that you do not have N1 digits. Uh, so uh, you'll have the tapes because the tapes are analog in the Citation 2. Uh, so you'll still have an indication of your N1 fan speed, but only through the tapes. You won't have the digits, uh, which is something that you would have in the uh, later models like the, the uh, 5 or the Ultra.